Hey everyone, thank you for watching this tutorial. Today I would like to present a basic knit workflow by adding some tips and tricks and I will guide you through. Thanks for watching this. Let's start with the first thing, which is the right fabric choice. In this example, I'm using the default fabric at the moment because I assembled first the patterns together. But of course I need the right fabric and this is one knit and I'm just simply go to our library and we'll search for the right knit quality. I can also type in knit here and to see all the qualities which comes with the software. And yes, I have, as you can see, always a preview how the knit is going to drape and look like. And it's always a combination of the physical properties and as well as the visual aspects. In this case, my achieved design is actually more a heavier knit. And in this case, I'm going to use the terry. The terry comes already with the right texture on top, but this is not the texture I actually would like to use. I'm just going to change this afterwards. And just that you can see here, here's the texture. In the meanwhile, I can also simulate, see how the drapes. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. And now I can simply going to change my knit design with a different texture. For this, I already prepared a few things. And this I will going to show you now. So what we need are different maps and I have a little overview which maps we need. First of all, we need the color map. So the color map actually gives you the color information of our texture. And then we have our normal map. So the normal map is the second most important map after the texture map. And it has like yeah, a bumpiness or a bump effect. And it is actually called in other 3D software as a bump map. And this one actually generates like a surface which has some wrinkles or for instance, weaves or scratches. And especially it is giving you a more depth feeling of a knit. Next to it, we have the roughness map and this map will help you to control the light information, making your fabric look more or less reflective. Our last map is the displacement map and this is a map which physically displaces and tessellates the mesh of the 3D garment to which it is applied and it also gives you an illusion of the depth of the fabric. So it is, as you see, a grayscale image and the darker tones will represent the bottom of the fabric and the lighter tones will represent the highest peaks. So in this term, it has definitely a good function for a knit. So in this way, you can express the yarn shape a little better when you use the displacement map. In the next step, we are going to use the different maps. And here I can show you how a combination of all the maps would look like as a CFAB file. Yes. I will guide you through how you can use now all the different maps in Clo. First of all, we can select our knit terry and then we will replace the texture map with our color map here. We just simply drag and drop on top of it. And there we go. We can already see the structure. Now we have to apply all the different maps as well. And because I would like to scale it, I would need to put them all together at the first time. I will show you why. Let's say I like to change the texture here. Like something like that. And I'm going to now open my library, going to use my normal map. And then you see that the it's like the shadows is a little bit off and I can also sh see in the 
transformation texture and normal map have different sizings. So in this term, we have to do all the maps first, like putting them into glow and afterwards we can then scale it. So I'm just going to do it again using my texture color map. Then I'm using my normal map. And if you don't have a normal map in case, um, you can also do a lot of different things when you want to have a nice knit texture. You can also create your own normal map through Clue. Let's say you have your color map, you so simply need to use this ruler here. That would be also a possibility. But we have a normal map, so I'm just going to use this one. Then we have a displacement map. First of all, I have to change to map. And then I can do the roughness map here. Now we have all the maps we need. And I have now the ability to change the scaling. As I said, I will just use the texture scaling with um, Edit Texture T. And I'm just going to make the loops a little bit smaller. Yeah, something. Like until I will find the right, yeah, the right size of my fabric. Okay, now I have it and I can already have a preview. So what I'm doing when I'm selecting different fabrics and sizings and so on, I'm also double check in the render engine as well to see if it is going in the di right direction, let's say. Yeah, I think that's from the sizing something I was looking for. And then I was just going to continue with that. And what else we have is for sure we have here a rip here, here and as well. And I will apply a rip. And afterwards, I will go through the settings. I will do the same quality for the rip and I will use a copy for that. And I'm just going to change these names. Knit, uh, no, rip. And here I'm going to do chunky. Okay, now I will apply this and this to a rib. Okay, so in the next step, we're going to apply the right knit rib. So yeah, I have the same CFAB file, so I will just use the right quality for that. So I'm going to our fabric library. I'm going to look for the right rib. Or the one I like to use. So we have different qualities. You always get kind of like a preview how it looks like. And I would like to have one which is a little bit more heavier. So this one, just going to drag and drop. And then you can see the rip here. Um, but I'm going to use another texture on top. So I have the quality but the texture should be a different one. I can also simulate, you see now how the drapes uh, is working now. And I'm just using another texture for that. So I prepared a rib texture. It's also a red one, but yeah, I will maybe change the color. I'm just going to first put now all the maps. one by one, and then also the normal map. Now I can scale it, here you can see. 
and I'm just trying to match the loops. So you see we have two loops, one here and one here, like um, a string of right loops and I just need to match those string together with this one so that it becomes more realistic. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to make it a little smaller. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit smaller. I can also make it in percentage, maybe 1% smaller. That looks quite good. And then trying to match it. Also this one. I'm trying to put it a little bit more down so that the left loops turns into right loops. Yeah, I think that's looking fine so far. Maybe I can still do it a little bit smaller. Okay. Trying to match it as as much as I can. And then I just going to leave it as it is now. Good. Uh, yes, and texture wise like the color, I'm just going to desaturate that and I will have the correct color, the one I like to have. I think that's nice. And then I'm going to put the right fur qualities and yes, and also a little bit of displacement map. Now we come to the point where we're going to make use of our displacement map. And we do this both for the knit chunky and for the rib. I'm just going for the rip, going to the displacement and going to amount here. And yeah, I would say between one or two millimeters. And I will do the same for the knit chunky. And then I have a look in the render engine to see if it's something I'm achieving. Just have a look. Yeah, it looks fine so far. I will apply some fur later. I can also check if I maybe want to change a bit of the displacement map here. So we can also make it a little more intense. Yeah, so that's now a little bit more intense. The stripes we have here. Okay, then I will go to the next, which is the fur. Before we go into the properties, I would like to explain the different properties. So we have the length, which is the, the length of the hair, thickness, which is the circumference of one hair, then the band, you can go between zero and one, and you see the higher the value is, the heavier is the hair, so it's like falling. Then we have the taper, which um, describes the root compared to the end of the hair. So if you have a, a value which is zero, then you see that the thickness on the end of the hair is the way it is on the root. And if you have a taper which is one, then the tip of the hair will be thinner. Additionally, we have density and segments. So the density describes how many individual hair we have per inch. 
and then we have the segments so the hair is made of different segments as you can see here the higher the value of the segment is the best way you can actually also describe curls because the more segments you have the curlier your hair will be okay let's jump to our example select the knit chunky and the fabric type is always by default matte when I'm using the drop down menu, I get more options and the one I need is the fur render only. Afterwards, it's usually like that, that the material has the same properties for back and side. For back, it totally makes sense to have the same appearance also from the inside, but we don't need this for the side. So I'm just going to take it off and change it to matte, otherwise we will keep really a lot of our performance and it's easier when we just lower it down wherever we can. Just going back to the front. We have fur presets which different qualities and of course those ones you don't need to use them because it's like real fur and because we have just the knit and we would like to express a little bit of hairiness I would recommend to use the terry cloth. From there we can start changing the values to make it more realistic. So I'm using this one. And afterwards I'm going to first shape and then the base and change the values here. So length, thickness, band, taper, density and segments. So basically the points I explained before. Because this fur is just visible in the rendering. We need to open the render window to see the changes we do in the base here. But for that, I don't need to use all my patterns. So just the, some of them. Otherwise, I am also keep the, the performance very busy and I'm just going to lower that down. So I'm going to invert this and hide my pattern. In the next step, we go to our render window and activate the render engine to see now our garment. I can zoom in so that we can better see the fur properties. And as you can see now, it is uh, quite dense. And so we're just going to change a little bit of the settings here. So in this regard, we go to our property editor and we will do some changes under for base. We have base and here we have a length of 0.2 cm and we're just going to make it uh, less in the length so 0 0.5 because we just want to have a little bit of hairiness as well as the thickness is a little bit too much also here we're just going to reduce it by 100 I will keep the band and the taper for now. Just have a look first. The density per inch is also quite a lot. And here I'm just going to change it by 111. Yes, and now it gets the look I want to achieve. Like this little hairiness I have here. Can zoom in and have a look, but I think I'm already quite happy with or without. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm just going to keep the base measurements here. Uh, I could apply a little bit more of variance or curl, but happy with my result. So I'm just going and would do the same settings for my rib. Change the type to fur. Also change it to a terry cloth. I'm just going to look for my color and I also would change my 
space with the same settings. In the next step, I will fine tune my garment. So I'm just will show all my pattern pieces. I will also turn it to quality render so that I get already a kind of impression. First of all, I change this to a thicker texture surface and I'm just going to check how much it looks like. I will add a little more to show that it's yeah, a little bit thicker for all my pieces. So I'm just going to have three because it's like more heavy. And what else can I do? I can also put some more shrinkage on the sides by using the steam tool or elastic. First of all, I will go a little bit down with my particular distance. So I have 20, I will work with the half now with 10 just to get already kind of like the right illusion. I will simulate. Okay, so the drape is a little bit heavier. Now I would like to shape my ribs and I have two ways how I can do it. So the one is the elastic applying this on the hem or using the steam tool. So usually I can really recommend to use the steam tool. I will sh show you both. Sometimes the other works better than th the other option. So let's have it here around the hem, just using the elastic. So we have here the different sections. In case you have it like here, you want to get rid of all the segment points, you can just select them, right click and convert to curve points. And now I can select the entire ham. And then I will go to my elastic. Now I have like 80%. That's quite a lot. Just, I'm just going to do 98%. And then let's see how it looks like. Just going to simulate. And then you see it's kind of like, yeah, getting a little bit more tight around the hip. I could, of course, go a little bit more. Or what I can do as well, I just will show this maybe around the neckline. And that's like optional if you like to have it more like this. I'm also going to do as a curve point here. And now I have to look, no, it's not upside down. So there is the ham just putting elastic here in 98 and then simulate. Yeah, so I think that's quite nice. So I will leave it. Okay, one more thing. I'm just going to take it off and we'll use the steam tool. So the steam tool has the option to shrinkage things. So here we have 5% of shrinkage. We can adjust that on the size. Now we have it like that. So it depends like what kind of pattern piece you have. If you have a bigger pattern piece, of course you can have a bigger size, but if it's a small one, then we can have it smaller. As well as you can adjust the hardness, like the inner circle, as you can see here. So I will keep it like that. And 4% I think is fine. You, you can also go in the other way direction. So make it like even bigger the pattern, but I will keep it like 4%, not as much. And I'm going over the rip here. I have the simulation on just to see it immediately. And I just going to hold my left click and then going over. You see it changed a little bit. I can just do one more time. And then it's kind of like, yeah, shrinking. Seeing that it was the last part was a little too much. So I'm just going to do one step back. So just one time like that. Yeah, I think that's better. 
I can do the same for my rib here. So this is a really nice way to shape your ribs in this regard. You always can remove it. Um, for instance, you just right click on your steam. So you can also remove your steam or just control Z when you want to remove the last steam you did. Okay, so just to get rid of the function, I'm just going back with transform pattern A and then I'm back. Some other nice things we can do is, for instance, changing the seam property. So here we have, if it's like a chunky knit, I can add some fold angle. I will demonstrate this here. As you know, the fold angle is usually 180. And here you, I change it to 210 just to have it, yeah, more like a knit. I change it to 210 just to have it um, a little bit more folding up. If I change it to 180, sometimes it's really just really little things and you even cannot see it. Yeah, so you can see it, which is 360, it goes inverts. And then when you do it the other way around. So this is something you can do. So 210 looks fine. And this we can do for the others as well. So we don't need to do it for all the hemlines, just the one which is kind of like affected. I think that's fine. Side seam I did already, then I'm just doing those. 210. Okay. Yeah, now oh, it's fine. Just simulate this quickly. Okay. And we can also change the normal maps for the seam line as well. So I'm just going to select this here. And here we have our intensity from 10. I'm just going to increase the intensity of 20 just having the normal map a little bit more intense for for the seam line here. At the moment you hardly can see it, but later in the in the render engine we can see that the intensity is a little bit higher. These are as I say really minor changes here. What else we can try the thickness of five. So this is this here. If we would like to express that even more in this regard, but in my case, I actually prefer it less. So it is a possibility. I'm just going back to my original intensity. Okay. Now we are good to go to change the avatar pose. So just going here, changing the avatar pose and I will have the attention pose. Good, and I will also change now the, the resolution to a high resolution garment. And I will apply this. Simulate, wait a bit until it is fully simulated in this particular instance. This can take up 
a bit of time, depends on your performance of your laptop. Okay, once we are finished that, we can stop the simulation and just going to hide the avatar. And I will now go to the render engine to see how it looks like. Just going to refresh my render engine. And maybe I'm just going to double check if I might need to change a few more things. or if I'm now happy with my result. To get a full preview, it takes some time to see the whole product. Now the preview is more or less finished and I can see some wrinkles which I would like to uh, fine tune a little bit. So for that, here we have some wrinkles, just in case I just want to have it a little less. I can also have the simulation on, then I can see it also immediately. Even though I have particle distance 5, it's okay. It just will take a little bit more time, but I will see it. So I'm just going to keep my settings. Just going to open it. And I'm just going to go along here and there. Yeah, I think that's for totally fine. Now you see it and I'm not going to do more than that. So I'm going to stop my simulation. Go out with A, transform A from my two, go to my render engine simulate or have a look again but I think that definitely works fine now. Yeah then it's good to go to to have a nice render here. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!